Vinny Chandran. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, but I'm going to challenge you to answer uh, the question put forth by Ryan. Is there a bubble in the social enterprise uh, capital market? So you're going to have to try to answer that tough question. But uh, let me tell you a bit about Kenny. Kenny is a senior associate at Forefront Capital Partners, a boutique investment bank focusing on knowledge-based industries. Uh, Kenny uh, holds a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering and also a Master's in Engineering Management from Duke. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks a lot for having me. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed all of these talks. Um, and uh, I don't know how much I can add at this point. So uh, I'm going to just go quickly through my slides uh, because I think that uh, questions are very important. Uh, so I want to involve everybody here. So let me just uh, talk a little bit about what I do. So really quick background on me. Uh, so currently I am in, in working for a small investment bank in Toronto uh, that focuses on technology, but where I came from uh, is actually the U.S. government. So I work for the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, working to commercialize advanced technologies for uh, energy efficiency. Uh, so I feel all the, the pains and frustrations uh, of uh, working in the government as uh, my friend here, and uh, you know I, I really have an understanding of how public-private partnerships are really important, uh, and all this alignment is really key to actually accomplishing things. So um, I am a volunteer for what's called the for the Acumen Fund, a, a chapter that is uh, belongs to the Acumen Fund called the Toronto Plus Acumen. Uh, so generally, Acumen Fund, the tagline is this, right? Changing the way the world tackles poverty. Uh, so we are these, the impact investors that we were talking about. Uh, so we are a social venture capital firm that invests in social enterprises uh, that can sustainably serve the poor. So the thing that makes us a little bit different uh, is that we are clearly on the track of investing in for-profit companies, uh, which I'll get into why. And what we do is we sell a good or service to the bottom of the pyramid directly. So our investments operate uh, that way. Uh, we've invested uh, about $70 million, probably more than that now. This slide's a little bit old. Um, we've uh, reached 86 million people. So you know, coming from where I, where I used to be in the, in the government, uh, if I could invest $70 million and reach 86 million people, I'd be really happy. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty amazing metric. The, the one that I love the most is the, the top one, uh, follow-on funding. It's a really good indicator that we've been creating value in our investments. Um, and you know, so about 63 projects work in capital. These are the, this is the areas that we invest in, right? Uh, so uh, healthcare, energy, agriculture, water, uh, infrastructure, like housing, and, and education. Um, and so I'm not going to talk about what we, what social enterprise. Um, so I didn't know what order I was going to do. Um, so this is generally how, how, how it works, right? We, we invest very early in the company. Uh, a lot of time it's just a concept uh, or a concept in a prototype. Uh, and we uh, mentor them, advise them, and make strategic introductions uh, so, and provide financial resources so they can scale up quickly. Um, so we've only been around for uh, about 10, 10, 11 years, and those are the metrics that I, that I gave you, I showed you before. So we've been pretty successful, uh, but there's a whole lot more to do. Uh, so what eventually happens, uh, the company is at, at the, at hopefully at the point of our, our exit, sustainable. Uh, so it's, it's uh, self-sufficient, it's, it's throwing out cash. Uh, so that's appealing to follow-on investors. We cash out, take, the, take those uh, returns, and then reinvest and do it all over. Um, I'm not going to talk about the same chart. I think you have like the exact same one. Uh, so I don't have graphics, though. Um, anyway, yeah, this is where we this is where we invest. Uh, so they generate profits, uh, and social social outcomes, and financial returns. So we're sort of at the sweet spot there. Uh, this is our founder, Jacqueline Novogratz. Uh, she sort of the, this is her brainchild, uh, and uh, it, it's it's sparked a huge movement. Uh, so you might have seen her on TED. Um, so this is just generally just some statistics. You, you had, uh, Ryan, you had better statistics than I do. Uh, but uh, this is sort of some of the action that 
uh, that is happening in the space. Uh, so tons of money going in, mainly in debt and equity. Uh, some of the, the interesting sectors, right? Housing is huge. Microfinance is huge, right? Everybody in this room has heard about microfinance for years now. Uh, but surprisingly, water is only, it's kind of tiny. Um, surprising. Uh, so if you want to learn more about this sort of thing, go to uh, Global Impact Investing Network. Um, these slides are going to be made available, available to you. So the source is right here. It's a really good uh, website to, to just pull some statistics. Um, so, you know, this is sort of what I wanted to talk about a little bit more is, is, you know, I came from the government, I think mainly in a pipeline, as I'm sure you do too, right? Um, you're really thinking about how can you shepherd projects from, uh, from conception all the way to when you can take your hands off and it does its own thing, right? Uh, so in thinking about social enterprises, and this is uh, from a report from uh, Acumen that I highly encourage all of you to look at, called From, Blu from Blueprint to Scale, and the link's here too. Um, so their theory is that there's this pioneer gap where uh, the, the idea is created, but there isn't enough funding to validate and prepare the investment uh, for more money and for scaling. Uh, so Acumen has very deliberately uh, filled that gap. They actually have two separate funds. One is the seed fund, and the other one is the Acumen Capital Markets Fund. The seed fund operates a little bit more over here, and then the uh, you know, Acumen Capital Markets a little bit over here. Um, so, you know, the government's really active, and you know, I'm sorry, I, don't really, I didn't really know a whole lot about what the government of Ontario was doing, uh, except that I knew that the social impact bond uh, project was, was happening. Um, so, how many people in here know exactly what a social impact bond does, how it works? Okay, so essentially what it is, what everybody, how everybody describes it is pay for performance, right? So you have a contract essentially with the government where uh, you, you do, you, an investor will invest, and if there's a certain benchmark or uh, a bar of social outcomes, then the government will fund them back a certain guaranteed return. So. Um, the challenge there is you have to already have a uh, track record, right? So that was that was slide here. Best suited for service providers without a track record. What if you don't have a track record, right? What if you're an entrepreneur who's just got an idea? It doesn't really help yet. But I think there are all these other ones that all those things that you listed that I think operate a little bit farther down here. So if you can create uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial opportunities down here, then they can use the other resources at their disposal to get across that funding gap. Like a couple here. One's called Community Forward Fund. What this company does is they mentor companies and get them investment ready. Uh, and then there's another one called uh, Endeavor, which is pretty much a consulting firm for nonprofits. So that, those are things that can shepherd the company across. And uh, I always think of pipelines again, so you can use grants and government support and some of these additional resources that is absolutely non-exhaustive. Um, and then eventually you can get over here. So that's how you can sort of shepherd your business across. And I think the important thing to do is to really have an understanding of this ecosystem. Uh, so that, you know, uh, like Ryan said, you know, government resources are scarce. So you have to really, really be smart about where you put them. Um, the key here though is, and this is sort of a slide that, uh, sort of as a sister to another slide, but these are a couple lessons that Acumen has learned in, in doing business. Uh, now that grants no markets alone will solve the problems of poverty, and also governments can rarely invent solutions, I kind of disagree with that, uh, but they can scale what works, I definitely agree with that. But the key in having the right solution here is that you got to have a dialogue, right? You have to have a uh, dialogue between academia, uh, public sector, private sector, investors, not-for-profits, and the general public. You need to have that alignment and a really honest discussion about you know, what, what does each stakeholder need. Because the challenge is, you know, if, if we, on, on behalf of the government, if you ask the private sector if they want more money, they always say yes. So it's got to be, that's, that's a tough, tough nut to crack. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is, uh, this is again just to show where we operate 
uh, but to do it very, very well, is you need to have that, uh, that cooperation. So anyway, that's where I'm going to stop. Uh, just so I have to put in a shameless plug, sorry. Uh, so we're having an event. If you want to learn a bit more about, about Acumen, about what we do, unfortunately, we're all the way in Toronto. I know how far and how long it takes to get there. Um, but you know, if, if you're interested, I'd uh, love to have you come. Uh, it's on Spadina. I, I mean, we're going to do a, a sort of like a, an in, a deep dive on, on how we do things. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking now so we can, we can start all having a conversation. Okay. <coughs>